Hello friends, after a long time, I'm back with a questions and answers video. This time, I'll try to answer some questions you've left in my previous videos. Remember, you can leave your questions for a future video. So to start, let's analyze a question a follower left in a video a while ago. Who is a better father? Omni-Man or Yujiro Hanma? If you haven't watched the series Invincible, be warned, there will be spoilers ahead. Well, it's an interesting question, but at the same time, simple answer. Both are fathers who truly love their sons. Both have a different philosophy, and their way of raising their children is totally different. However, Yujiro, even though he loves Baki, was not a good father to him throughout his development. The ogre taught him a couple of things, and then abandoned him to become strong on his own. Some will say this way of doing things is that of a strict father concerned about the individual development of his son. However, Yujiro did not do it with those intentions. Yujiro's goal was always to create a fighter who could give him the fight of his life, regardless of the means to achieve it. The ogre was willing to give Baki as many traumas as possible to make him stronger. This is somewhat hypocritical of Yujiro, because as far as we know, Yujiro did not force him to become strong. It was Yujiro himself who decided to follow that path to be the strongest man on the earth. And well, on the other hand, we have Omni-Man with his son Mark. Nolan, despite what he did at the beginning of the series, was actually a good father. He was an excellent father, raising his son with true love and being there for Mark at every stage of his growth. After the epic fight they had, Nolan regretted his actions and went through an existential crisis. He realized that his wife and son were not just part of his plan as he thought. These people truly touched his heart and made him rethink his purpose in life, just knowing that makes the answer to the question very obvious. Definitely, Nolan is a better father than Yujiro because, unlike the ogre, Nolan is a great father in the eyes of others. On the other hand, Yujiro believes he is a good father from his perspective. He really believes his ways are the right ones, but obviously, this is not the case. Who has the toughest skin in the series? The Baki series is full of characters with incredibly tough skin. And while many might bet on one particular character as the toughest, we'll exclude Yujiro Hanma from this discussion to focus on other notable fighters. Let's think about Haneyama, a fighter many would consider for this title. Although he is extraordinarily tough, there are others in the series with superior physical armor. His skin isn't exceptionally hard, but his incredible pain tolerance often gives that impression. In every fight, Aniyama shows his ability to withstand damage. He is not much affected in exchanges of blows, as seen in his confrontation against an armed group of mobsters, where he received only superficial cuts, or in his fight against Katsumi, where he lost but remained standing. Haneyama fell unconscious but remained standing in the Colosseum, a testament to his endurance. This endurance was repeated in his confrontation with Speck. Haneyama not only withstood the blows of someone capable of severely damaging the Statue of Liberty, but also withstood damage from various firearms. His encounter with Musashi's sword was another example of his endurance, as even when cut, he refused to fall. Therefore, although Haneyama is incredibly though, his skin can be relatively easily wounded, especially in fights involving weapons, leaving him with numerous scars. This justifies his position in this comparison. Now, let's evaluate Oliva Biscuit, known for having one of the toughest skins in the series. Despite his limited appearances, he has shown great ability to withstand blows, such as in his fight against Baki and his demon back, from which he emerged with only a few bruises. His most notable moments of resistance include repelling shotgun pellets fired at close range and stopping a sword thrust with his chest, demonstrating extremely hard skin and muscles. However, a kitchen knife managed to cut him, leaving scars on his face and abdomen. The only evident marks on his skin, despite his life as a mercenary surrounded by hostile prisoners. Then there's Pickle, who has endured almost any attack, including bullets with his skin. Even though he survived among dinosaurs, Musashi's swords managed to injure him. However, his endurance is clearly superior to that of any other conventional weapon in the Baki series. In my opinion, Pickle would be the character with the toughest skin in the series. Just compare the cuts Musashi made on his skin to those on Hanayama. This tells us that Pickle has a higher degree of hardness than fighters like Oliva Biscuit and Hanayama. But this is only if we leave Yujiro out of the equation, who survived wars without receiving a scratch. Moreover, he is the only fighter who does not have a notable scar. What would happen if Oliva Biscuit stopped training his muscles and opted for a body like Kaku's? Well, for that to happen, Biscuit would need a reason for the change. He might, for instance, suffer several defeats and realize that muscles aren't everything. 
This could lead him to change his training approach and leave behind his beloved muscles. I believe that if Oliva abandons his muscular build, there's a high chance he would become stronger by learning different fighting styles and martial arts. However, this wouldn't be a short-term process. Like Kaku, it would take many years, maybe at least 20 years. Personally, I wouldn't like to see Biscuit abandon his current fighting style. It would be enough for him to learn a new fighting style and combine it with his brute strength. In his fight against Nomi, we saw him learn from his mistakes. And unlike last time, he didn't underestimate his opponent and went all out from the start. But of course, this is just speculation. Let me know if you think Biscuit would be stronger if he abandoned his muscles and focused on learning new fighting styles. Who was the strongest inmate among the five? Physically, Speck appeared to be the inmate with the greatest brute strength. He almost destroyed the Statue of Liberty with his hands. Moreover, the punches he gave Baki clearly hurt a lot. However, when it comes to techniques and fighting style, I would say Dorian is the most complete fighter. What made him look bad was his defeat against Dopo. But let's remember that Dopo also put Yujiro Hanma in trouble. What do you think of Jack's fighting style? Do you believe using his teeth as a weapon is fair to his opponents? Personally, I like Jack's style. Remember, this is new for him. Jack has always been a fighter who uses his teeth as his primary weapon. In the Maximum Tournament, we saw him using his bite against fighters like Baki and Goki. It's important to keep this in mind because some people forget that Jack has always used his bite and think that it's only now that he has started to fight this way. Regarding whether I think it's fair or not, I believe it doesn't matter in a series like Baki where fights are taken to the extreme. The fights in this series are known for having no rules. There are fighters who have even used bladed weapons and explosives. A bite is the least dangerous thing a fighter has used to fight. In Chapter 13 of Baki Rahim, this was mentioned. A fighter from ancient Greece was accused by his opponent of biting him. However, he defended himself by saying that teeth are not an external weapon. Both teeth and nails are tools that are part of us. Even Yujiro praised Jack for not being swayed by bad comments and ridicule due to his fighting style. I think that's enough to make it clear that Jack's bite is not a cowardly act. He is simply making use of the tools nature has provided him. I also remember someone asking me if I had watched the Kengen series and nest I watched it a while ago, though only the animated version. I haven't read the manga yet, but I like it a lot. Someone also asked me if I would review the chapters of the Kengen manga. I would like to. But some friends who create content about that series have told me that the manga has a lot of copyright and it's difficult to upload videos of the chapters because the company that holds the rights reports those videos and YouTube takes them down from its platform. For now, I don't think I'll upload things from the manga, but I could make other content related to the series. Leave me your suggestions in the comments box. And while before finishing, I'd like to share with you Ithagaki's drawing process. In these images, we can see that he is one of the few manga authors who still draw their works in a traditional way. In fact, he does it in a very peculiar manner. He draws each panel on a different piece of paper and then pastes them together to complete the manga page. I share this so we can appreciate the incredible work this man does. It's admirable that, after 30 years, he continues to work traditionally, despite having so much technology that could facilitate his work. I believe that, after seeing this, we now know another reason why the Baki manga always takes long breaks. It's all because Ithagaki takes his time to draw each page of the manga. And while well, don't forget that you can leave your questions and suggestions for future videos. Leave your opinions in the comment box. And well friends, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. I hope you have a nice day or night. See you soon.